teachings of Queen Kunti, Chapter 15, Beyond Birth and Death. Kechid Ahur Ajam Jatam Punya Shlokasya Kirtaye Yedo Priyasyan Vavaye Malayasyeva Chandanam Some say that the unborn is born for the glorification of pious kings. Others say that he is born to please King Yadu, one of your dearest devotees. You appear in his family as sandalwood appears in the Malaya hills. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.8.32 Because the Lord's appearance in this material world is bewildering, there are different opinions about the birth of the unborn. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that he takes his birth in the material world although he is the Lord of all creations and he is unborn. So there cannot be any denial of the birth of the unborn because he himself establishes the truth. But still there are different opinions as to why he takes his birth. That is also declared in the Bhagavad Gita. He appears by his own internal potency to re-establish the principles of religion and to protect the pious and inhalate the impious. That is the mission of the appearance of the unborn. Still it is said that the Lord is there to glorify the pious king Yudhishthira. Lord Sri Krishna certainly wanted to establish the kingdom of the Pandavas for the good of all in the world. When there is a pious king ruling over the world, the people are happy. When the ruler is impious, the people are unhappy. In the age of Kali, in most cases, the rulers are impious and therefore the citizens are also continuously unhappy. But in the rights of democracy, the impious citizens themselves elect their representative to rule over them and therefore they cannot blame anyone for their unhappiness. Maharaja Nala was also celebrated as a great pious king, but he had no connection with Lord Krishna. Therefore, Maharaja Yajistra is meant here to be glorified by Lord Sri Krishna, but also glorified King Yadu by taking birth in his family. He is known as Yadava, Yaduvira, Yadunandan, etc. Although the Lord is always independent of such obligations. He is just like the sandalwood that grows in the Malaya hills. Trees can grow anywhere and everywhere. Yet, because the sandalwood trees grow mostly in the area of the Malaya hills, the same sandalwood and the Malaya hills are interrelated. Therefore, the conclusion is that the Lord is ever unborn like the sun and yet he appears as the sun rises on the eastern horizon. As the sun is never the sun of the eastern horizon, so the Lord is no one's son, but is the father of everything that can be. In Bhagavad Gita 4.6, the Lord says, Ajo pisan abhyayatma bhutanam ishvaro pisan prakritim swamadhishthaya sambhavami atma mayaya Although I am unborn and my transcendental body never deteriorates and although I am the lord of all sentient beings, I still appear in every millennium in my original transcendental form. Krishna is unborn and we are also unborn. But the difference is that, unlike the lord, we have been entangled in a material body. Therefore, we cannot keep our position as the unborn but have to take birth and transmigrate from one body to another with no guarantee of what kind of body we shall have next. Even in this life, we are obliged to accept one body after another. A child gives up his childhood body and accepts the body of a boy. The boy gives up his boyhood body to accept a youthful body, which he then gives up for an old body. Therefore, it is natural to conclude that when one gives up one's old body, one will have to accept another body. Again, one will accept the body of a child. This is a natural cycle of this material world. It is similar to changes of season. After spring comes summer and after summer comes fall and then winter and then spring again. Similarly, after day comes night and after night comes day. And just as these cyclic changes take place one after another, we change from one body to another. And it is natural to conclude that after leaving the present body, we shall receive another body. Bhutva, Bhutva, Pradiyate. This conclusion is very logical. It is supported by the Shastra, the Vedic literature, and it is also affirmed by the greatest authority, Shri Krishna himself. Therefore, why should we not accept it? 
if one does not accept this if one thinks that there is no life after death one is foolish there is life after death there is also the chance to free oneself from the cycle of repeated birth and death and attain a life of immortality but because we have been accustomed to accepting one body after another since time immemorial it is difficult for us to think of a life that is eternal and the life of material existence is so troublesome that one may think that if there is an external life that life must be troublesome also for example a diseased man who is taking very bitter medicine and who is lying down in the bed eating there passing stool and urine there unable to move may find his life so intolerable that he thinks let me commit suicide similarly materialistic life is so miserable that in desperation one sometimes takes to a philosophy of voidism or impersonalism to try to negate his very existence and make everything zero actually however becoming zero is not possible nor is it necessary we are in trouble in our material condition but when we get out of our material condition we can find real life eternal life because we are part and parcel of krishna who is ajha beyond birth and death we are also ajha how could we be otherwise If my father is happy and I am the son of my father why should I be unhappy I can naturally conclude that I shall enjoy my father's property just as my father is enjoying it similarly god krishna is all powerful all beautiful all knowledgeable and complete in everything and although I may not be complete I am part and parcel of god therefore I have all the qualities of god to a partial extent God does not die so I also shall not die that is my position this is explained in Bhagavad Gita 2.20 na jayate mriyate va kadachit describing the soul krishna says that the soul is never unborn na jayate and if one is not born how can he die there is no question of death mriyate va death is for one who has taken birth and if no one has taken birth then no one will have death also Unfortunately however we do not know this we are conducting scientific research but we do not know that living entity is a spiritual soul with no birth and no death this is our ignorance the soul is eternal everlasting and primeval nityah shashvato yam purano the soul does not die with annihilation of the body nahanyate hanyamane sharire but although the soul does not die it accepts another body this is called bhava rog the material disease Since Krishna is a supreme living entity nityo nityanam chetana chetana nam they are exactly like Krishna the difference being that Krishna is vibhu unlimited whereas we are anu limited qualitatively we are as good as Krishna therefore whatever propensities Krishna has we have also for example Krishna has the propensity to love someone of the opposite sex and therefore we have this same propensity The beginning of love is present in the eternal love between Radha and Krishna. We are also seeking eternal love, but because we are conditioned by the material laws, our love is interrupted. But if we can transcend this imp- interruption, we can take part in loving affairs similar to those of Krishna and Radha Rani. Our aim should therefore be to go back home back to Godhead, back to Krishna, because Krishna is eternal. We shall there receive an eternal body. Kunti says kechid ahur ajam jatam the supreme eternal the supreme unborn has now taken his birth but although krishna takes birth his birth is not like ours that we should know the lord says in bhagavad gita 4.9 janma karma cha me divyam evam yo vedatvadah tyaktva deham punarjanmana iti mami iti so arjuna one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not upon leaving the body take his birth again in this material world but attains my eternal abode o arjuna it is described in shrimad bhagavatam that when krishna first appeared he did not take birth from the womb of devaki rather he first appeared in the majestic four armed form of vishnu and then he became a small child on devaki's lap therefore krishna's birth is transcendental whereas our birth takes place by force by the laws of nature krishna is not under the laws of nature the laws of nature work under him maya dikshena prakriti hi suyate sa characharam 
Prakriti nature works under the order of Krishna and we work under the order of nature. Krishna is the master of nature and we are servants of nature. Therefore Kunti Devi says, Kechit Ahuhu. Someone may say that the unborn has taken birth. It may appear that he has taken birth just like us, but in fact he is not. Kunti Devi distinctly says, Kechit Ahuhu. Some foolish persons may say that he has taken birth. Krishna himself also says in Bhagavad Gita 9.11, Avajananti Mamudha Manushim Tanu Mashritam. Because I've appeared just like a human being, those who are rascals think that I am also just like an ordinary human. Param Bhavam Ajanantaha. They do not know the mystery behind God's taking birth like a human being. Krishna is everywhere. The Lord is situated in everyone's heart. Ishwara Sarva Bhutanam Pradeshe Arjuna Tishtati. And since he is within us and is all powerful, why should it be difficult for him to appear before us? The great devotee Dhruv Maharaj was engaged in meditation on the four-handed form of Vishnu. All of a sudden his meditation broke and he immediately saw before him the same form upon which he had been meditating. Was it very difficult for Krishna to appear in this way? Of course not. Similarly, it was not difficult for him to appear before Devaki in the same four-handed form. Therefore, Krishna says, Janmakarmachame Divyam. One must understand my transcendental birth and activities. Kunti Devi has this understanding. She knows that although to some fools Krishna appears to take birth, in fact he is unborn. But why should Krishna perform the pastime of taking birth? Kunti Devi replies, Punya Shloka Sekirtaye to glorify those who are very pious and very much advanced in spiritual understanding. Krishna comes to as the son of Devaki to glorify his devotee Devaki. Krishna becomes the son of Yashoda to glorify Yashoda. Similarly, Krishna appears in the dynasty of Maharaja Yadu, his great devotee, just to glorify, glorify Maharaja Yadu. Thus, Krishna is still known as Yadava, the descendant of Maharaja Yadu. Krishna has no obligation to take his birth in a particular family or country, but he takes birth to glorify a certain person or a certain family cause of their devotion. Therefore, his birth is called Divyam, transcendental. The Lord is not obliged to take birth, but we are obliged to do so. That is the distinction between our birth and the birth of Krishna. If by our karma or activities, we are fit to take birth in a good family, in human society or demigod society, what shall we do? But if our activities are like those of animals, we shall have to take birth in a family of animals. That is the force of karma. Karmana Deva Netrena Jantor Deho Papattaye Bhagavatam 3.31.1 We develop a certain type of body according to our karma. The human form of life is meant for understanding the supreme, the absolute truth, Adato Brahma Jignasa. But if we do not endeavor for this, if we misuse this opportunity and simply remain like animals, we shall return to an animal form of life. Therefore, the Krishna Consciousness Movement is trying to save people from growing down to animal life. The appearance of Lord Sri Krishna is compared to the growth of sandalwood trees in the Malaya hills. Malaya Seva Chandanam There are two Malayas, the Malaya hills and the part of the world now known as Malaysia. The Chandana tree or sandalwood tree can grow anywhere. There is no rule that it is to grow in Malaysia or the Malaya hills. But because the sandalwood grows in large quantities in those parts of the world, it is known as Malaya Chandana. In the western countries, there is scented water known as Udicolon. It can be manufactured anywhere, but because it was originally manufactured in the city of Cologne, it is known as Udicolon. Similarly, sandalwood can grow anywhere because it was originally very prominent in Malaysia and the Malaya hills, it is known as Malayan sandalwood. Kunti offered this prayer 5,000 years ago and this indicates that sandalwood was growing 5,000 years ago in Malaysia. Malaysia is not a new name. It was known thousands and thousands of years ago to the followers of the Vedic culture. Nowadays, of course, Malaysia is growing rubber trees because there is good demand for rubber. But formerly, Malaysia grew sandalwood on a large scale because there was a great demand for sandalwood, especially in India. Because India is a tropical country and sandalwood is very cooling, people in India use sandalwood pulp as a cosmetic. Even now, during the very warm days of the summer season, those who can afford to do so apply sandalwood pulp to their bodies and feel cool all day. 
in india it was the system that after bathing and sanctifying the body by applying marks of tilak one should offer obeisances to the deity take some chandan prasadam from the room of the deity and apply it as a cosmetic to the body this is called prasadhana but it is said that in kali yuga the present age snanam eva prasadhanam bhagavatam 12.2.25 if one can even bathe nicely that is prasadhana in india even the poorest man will take an early morning bath every day but when i came to america i saw that even taking one's daily bath may be a difficult thing and is often not the practice in india we are accustomed to see people bathe thrice in a day but in new york i have seen that one may have to go to a friend's house to bathe because one may not have facilities to do so at home these are symptoms of kali yuga snanam eva prasadhanam in the kali yuga it will be very difficult to even take a bath another symptom of kali yuga is daksham kutumba bharanam bhagavatam 12.2.7 one will be famous for his pious activities simply if he can maintain his family the word daksham meaning famous for pious activities comes from daksha which means expert in kali yuga one will be considered expert if he can maintain a family consisting of himself his wife and one or two children in india of course the traditional family is a joint family consisting of a man and his wife their parents and children their in-laws and so on but in kali yuga it will be difficult to maintain a simple family of oneself one's wife and a few children when i was living in new york among the people coming to our classes was an old lady who had a grown son i asked her why doesn't your son get married she replied yes he can marry when he can maintain a family i did not know that maintaining a family was such a difficult job here but that is described in the bhagavatam if one can maintain a family he will be considered a very glorious man and if a girl has a husband she will be considered very fortunate it is not our business to criticize but the symptoms of kali yuga are very severe and they will grow more severe the duration of kali yuga is 402000 years and although 5000 years of it have passed already we find so many difficulties and the more we grow into this kali yuga the more the times will be difficult the best course therefore is to complete our krishna consciousness and return home back to godhead that will save us otherwise if we come back again for another life in kali yuga we shall find difficult days ahead and we shall have to suffer more and more